stand to preach from the book of Judges, chapter number 12. And uh, hallelujah. And the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward and said unto Jephthah, Wherefore passest thou over to fight against the children of Ammon? And didst not call us to go with thee? We will burn thine house upon thee with fire. And Jephthah said unto them, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon. And when I called you, ye delivered me not out of their hands. And when I saw that ye delivered me not, I put my life in my hands and passed over against the children of Ammon. And the Lord delivered them into my hand. Wherefore then are ye come up unto me this day to fight against me? Then Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with, the, uh, and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim because they said, Ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Massonites. And the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites. And it was so that when those Ephraimites which were escaped said, Let me go over, that the men of Gilead said unto them, Art thou an Ephraimite? If he said nay, then said they unto him, Say now, Shibboleth. And he said, Sibboleth, for he could not frame to pronounce it right. Then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan. And there fell at that time of the Ephraimites forty and two thousand. And Jephthah judged Israel six years. Then died Jephthah the Gileadite and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. Amen. Let's look at verse 6. Then said they unto him, Say now, Shibboleth, and he said, Sibboleth, for he could not frame to pronounce it right. Then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan. And there fell at that time of the Ephraimites forty and two thousand. Amen. Would you stretch your hands this way? Ask the Lord to help us here tonight. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost. One more time we stand, Lord, before the sheep of Your pasture. Lord, they're Your children. They're the ones You purchased with Your blood. I pray, Lord, let me say every word, Lord. Lord, fearing Thee, knowing that one day I will stand and give an account for every message that I've ever preached. I pray tonight, Lord, that You would move. Lord, that You would fill this place with Your glory. Help them, Lord, open their ears and their hearts. And we'll give you praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I want to preach on if the Lord would help me. Amen. I want to preach about a burden that's worth bearing. Amen. A burden that is worth bearing. Here in my text, Amen, the Lord's people, Gilead, and Ephraim have got into a fight. They are in a squabble. They have come to Jephthah. Jephthah just won a great victory over Amnon. He had called for Ephraim to help. They didn't show up, so he took it in his own hands and won the battle. And now Ephraim has come. He been, they've said a few slurs against Jephthah and the Gileadites. And so now we find that there's a war going on. But really at the bottom of this feud and what and started this quarrel was pride. The Bible said by pride alone cometh contention. I'm telling you a man that is contentious on every point and on everything, whether he will admit it or not, the Word of God declares that that man probably, no doubt, is a man that is prideful. Are you hearing me? Now you must understand tonight that the Gileadites were not a tribe. They were the descendants of a powerful family from the tribe of Manasseh. But we realize that both Manasseh and Ephraim were the sons of Joseph. 
So we find that really between the Gileadites and the Ephraimites, there should have been a family kindred spirit. There should have been some kind of kindred feeling. But instead, we find in the pages of God's Word a struggle for superiority. Amen. A nation that feels that they are a tribe that feels that they have been slighted and slurred and now we have a quarrel. Are you hearing me? The Gileadites and the Ephraimites go to war. Now I know, amen, that what took place here is probably justified because it was war. Amen. But what disturbs me, amen, that this same spirit, amen, seems so many times to come into our churches. Our churches and our fellowships become more places of squabble and skirmishes and fights as people try to pull wires. Amen. And they struggle for superiority. Preachers, teachers, choir members. Come on now. Shuffle and try to get superiority. There's something about human nature that we want to be, he been thought high of. Come on, I got people in my church, hey man, it really burns me up. Always coming around and whining. And I'm, I, I love my church. Please don't think I'm bad mouth them. I don't want you to think that I love them. They're good to me. You know, but I think every church has those folks that always come and they're whining. I don't have nothing to do. Come on now, nothing to do. What they're basically saying is I don't have a place that there's some limelight. I don't have a place where everybody can say, hey, he's got a, a Sunday school class or she's got a Sunday school class. Hey, Amen. I don't have anything to do for the Lord. And we've got a world that is lost. Hey, Amen. It's going to hell. Are you hearing me? I've taught those preachers that are sitting under me. Hey, Amen. If you don't have a pulpit, make a pulpit. One of them called me today. It said we're going to ni- the Top Gun tonight. Hey, Amen. It's a nightclub. He said it's Bible night in Monroe. Come on now. Amen. I want to tell you there's plenty for everybody to do. Amen. If you're not interested in climbing the rung of the ladder of superiority. Well, glory. You see, it's in our fallen nature. It's in our depraved, pandemic nature. It's always been that way. That struggle. Amen. Come on now. We find it in the very beginning. When Cain slew Abel. What did he slay him over? Because Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than he did. That same religious spirit has moved on down. We've seen Esau and Jacob. Joseph and his brethren. Absalom and Amnon. Are you hearing me? This sinister desire for superiority. And now we've got two brother tribes that have should have felt like family. But now they're fighting. And at the banks of the Jordan River, amen, it is now died with the blood of the Ephraimites. Amen. Because they would say, amen, are you an Ephraimite? Amen. If they said nay, then they said say shibboleth. And all they could frame Amen was civil. So I need to preach. Now I know tonight, Amen, I don't know your circumstance. There may be people right under the sound of my voice that are at ought with one another. I don't know. There may be some of you that have grudges against one another. There are some of you maybe that are envious of somebody else. The car they drive, the clothes they wear, even the parts they have in the choir. But I want to tell you tonight, I don't know your circumstance. I don't know why you think you have the right, amen, to fight with your brother. But this one thing I do know, amen, we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. I read where he said, let brotherly love continue. I never read where he said, let it discontinue. Paul said, 
in Corinthians chapter 13, or not maybe chapter 12 maybe, amen, verse 11, somewhere in there. He said, finally, my brethren, farewell. He said, be perfect. Be of good cheer. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. He told them in Thessalonica, be at peace among yourselves. Come on now. But that's not really what I want to preach. Some of you are nervous, aren't you? Hallelujah. You're thinking, oh Lord, pulling your feet back under the pew. But that's not really what I want to preach on. Did you notice tonight the difference of the pronunciation between shibboleth and sibboleth? It was just one consonant. Amen. They couldn't frame the H. All they could say was sibboleth. Come on now. You say it's very small and it's very unimportant preacher. Amen. Yes, but the difference was this. Amen. It cost the lives of 40 and 2,000. Amen. Men that couldn't say it right. Come on now. I want to tell you what I see here. Amen. Is a spirit of intolerance. When they were detected by pronunciation, when they could not frame it just right, they took them down to the fords of the river and they slew them. I wonder in our churches how many have come that was one letter from sanctification. They just couldn't get the H word down. Amen. They just couldn't get holiness down. Amen. Like we believed it. And instead of being patient and long suffering and forbearing, it was easier to take them down to the river. I don't know about this fellowship. Brother Dwayne ain't, ain't told me nothing. All, all good, if anything. So I don't know. I, I might be missing it here, but I doubt it because human nature is human nature. Are you hearing me? We are so quick sometimes to cut one or another off. Come on now. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Amen. You know, sometimes we are, amen, if someone does, amen, is not, if they're not just like we are. Come on now, I know where I'm at. I didn't even tell my wife what I was going to preach tonight. Hallelujah. I didn't want to take her to the emergency room. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? But I want to tell you, amen, this spirit of intolerance. Amen. Come on. They can't get the H word down. And we and, and we just are so impatient. I'm telling you, the man of God is not to be a striker. He's not to be a brawler. But he's to be patient unto all men. Oh, God, I need your help right now. Amen. Instead of teaching them how to pronounce it. Amen. It was easier to take it down and kill them. I want to tell you, my God, give us a revival in the holiness church that when they can can't say shibboleth. Amen. Let's teach them how to say it. Let's live it before them. Let's be an example. But whatever we do, let's not kill them. You say anyone can slaughter. Anyone can drive them to the butcher. Huh? I mean, I know men, that they boast of running 15. Their holiness, bless God. Come on now. World's going, going to hell all around them. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. But they don't have any patience or any tolerance. Come on now to work with someone. Listen to me. I pioneered a church eight years ago by the help of God. It wasn't me, it was God. But you know what I learned, Brother Tabor, through that experience? When you deal with people that are not third and fourth generation holiness, come on now. Amen. They'll, they've looked at me when they said, did you see Amen, such and such on TV? And I said, I don't have a television. Come on now. They look at me with 50 cent piece eyes like, my Lord, have you come 
off the spaceship. Hallelujah. I've had to work with people. I've had to be patient with people. Come on now. Some of them I worked with them and they left me anyway. But there's been some. Amen. That I've bore up. Hallelujah. I didn't take them down to the river. Hallelujah. But I preached to them. Oh, hallelujah. And told them about holiness. There were a few times I had my gun. One time Brother Shaw was there and I told Brother Ben, this is what I'm getting ready to do. And he basically said, put your, your gun back in your holster there, Bubba. Huh? Come on now. Now, I know, I know some might misunderstand this as being some compromising message, but your pride keeps you, amen, from really seeing, amen, where we are. Are you hearing me? I'm not a compromiser by no means. You could come to my church, but listen to me. Amen, anybody can slaughter. Anybody can get up and look over the crowd and, amen, just fire a machine gun at them and, amen, just lay them out. Anybody can do that. Come on, that's all you can preach. You need to put your Bible on the shelf and go get in a place of prayer until God gives you a message. Now hear me. I'm not against holiness preaching now. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But man, anybody can, anybody can lead or anybody can drive them to the slaughterhouse. But it takes someone that loves to lead. Like Jacob, when Esau was wanting to drive him, when he had met him and they had reconciled, he said, come on, Jacob. But Jacob said, Esau, the children are tender. The flocks and the herds are young. If men shall overdrive them one day, all the flock will die. But I will lead on softly. I want to tell you, God puts it in that pastor's heart. He puts it in that shepherd's heart. He knows how much they can take. He knows how fast they can go. My God, I want to lead on softly. Listen, a good leader, a good leader inspires men with confidence in him. But a great leader inspires the people amen to have confidence in themselves are you hearing me they said can I get just a hair monitor brother they said say shibboleth come on now shibboleth meant a river flowing or an ear of corn growing amen but they couldn't say it they couldn't say shibboleth all they could say amen was shibboleth are you hearing me Hey, that civil has been a burden. Come on now. I'm telling you, that's the tragedy of our day. When they can't get the H letter in it. When they can't say shibboleth. And all they can say is shibboleth. Hey, that when they can't get the H down quick enough. We get trigger happy. We get nervous. We think if they don't line up quickly. Hey, that so and so's going to think. And hey, that so and so's going to say. Hey, that come on now. They're a burden. They don't understand. Their lights are all tangled up. Their marriages are in a mess. Amen. They're a burden. But somebody has got to untangle their life. Somebody has got to teach them how to say shibboleth when all they can say is shibboleth. But it's easy. I don't know if this is a youth rally message. But it's easy. It's easier just to take them down. We have become so absorbed in our own agendas. Come on now. Our own kingdoms. Our own wants. Until really we don't value the souls of men like we need to. The greatest commandment. When Jesus left the church, he told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. 
Amen. To win the loss. Come on now. Do you know when you win the loss, they're going to come in and their lives are going to be messed up? Do you realize that? Some of them are going to have addictions. Some of them are going to have depressions. Some of them are going to be bound by devil. Some of them are going to even have all kinds of trouble. I want to tell you, amen, but oh, we can't get to the place, church, that they're too much of a burden for us. Come on now, say shibboleth. Sibboleth. Oh, no, 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 I, no, 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 no. Hey, man, uh, you're going to mess up my cookie cutter. Come on now. I'm not going to win the whole NSFFA meeting. Hey, man, with you looking like that. Come on here. But I want to tell you, hey, man, I'd rather have somebody that just come to Jesus and let somebody talk about me but me be trying to lead them into the way of holiness and righteousness and godliness. Come on now. Well, if you're this, this, and this, stay off our platform. Because everybody can see. Well, I've got a platform standing. <laughs> but I wonder, I wonder how many of you could get on the platform if I said, how many of you prayed 30 minutes today? How many of you read five chapters today? Huh? How many's fasted in the last week? Oh Lord, it's quiet, Brother Dwayne. You might never have me back again, but praise God. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hey man, when it's something we can see. Hey man, we grow impatient. Come on now. Hey man, we want to slay immediately. But some of you have been harboring grudges. Some of you are ate up with jealousy and envy. Come on now. You're not praying through over it. Come on now. You're not praying. There's dust in your soul, dust on your Bible, dust on the altar. My God, I need to preach to you here. Oh, hallelujah. There is the say, say, shiver. Shiver. I had a lady come, pulled into my church. When I first took the church, I need to hurry. Are y'all listening? She come and she pulled in. Never seen her before. Her little granddaughter had just been kidnapped and had went to Iraq or Iran. Her dad was Iranian. Her mother was an American. No way to get her back. She pulled in that church and her hands were just like this. I mean, and, uh, and she tried not to smoke. And... She, she, she was looking for help, man. I, I, I was saying, say shibboleth, and all she could say was shibboleth. Are you hearing me? She was a basket case. So, so she came and she got saved. Her little seven-year-old girl really got saved. And when mama wanted to quit, that little girl would cry. She's going to export next year. Come on now. A, the whole, one of the holiest girls mo- lives better than any of my young people. Just a little girl. She got it in her heart. Hallelujah. She, she quit cutting her hair. And I'm not saying that to... Hey, but she quit cutting her hair. I didn't even mention it. She loved God. Come on now. You want to know what I believe? You look at that family. Hey, man, come on. I didn't have to tell them nothing. They fell in love with Jesus. And there was nothing in this world they wanted to hang on to. But Iris had a problem. It's them six-inch coffin tacks. Huh? You know. And I prayed with her. And at first, you know, she couldn't get deliverance, Brother Judd. And I was wanting to say, Say shibboleth! Yeah. Shibboleth! 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 Yeah. That was driving me crazy. Devil saying, man, you don't have no power. This woman can't even get delivered. Hey, man, but I kept on. I felt the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Sometimes as a shepherd, hallelujah, we've got to watch. You know, we could preach the right thing in the wrong way. Come on, preachers. You might as well say amen. Hallelujah. Randy Webb, I called him. He, he's been a counselor to me sometimes. I, I was saying, Randy, I got it. what am I going to do? He said, I'll tell you what you need to do. Whistle real loud and get your shepherd dog back on the porch. Amen.
Hear me. I know some of you are probably going to fall out with me right now, but it don't really matter what you think. You know, you think, well, bless God, if they really get it, they're going to get rid of them. Well, come on here. Amen. I'm telling you, I don't understand it either. I wish they just she would have done that, but she didn't. But I didn't say, okay, come on outside here. I'm getting ready to cut your head off because you can't say shibboleth. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, Amen. I didn't tell you you're ignorant and you're as dumb as a box of rocks. And No, sir. I said, Iris, you're going to have to break that habit. It is sin and it's not pleasing in the sight of God. You're going to have to get the victory on it. I know, Brother Tracy, I know. I said, but I'm going to keep on working with you. I'm going to keep on working with you. I'm going to keep on working with you. That little girl was sitting there too. You hear me? Come on now. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know. I don't know how. Oh, God help me. I'm not don't worry, amen, about what's going on right now. But listen to me. Finally, amen, she battled that, I mean, for months. But one Sunday morning or Thursday evening, her husband come to church. He's now my board member. Are you hearing me? Amen. He was an alcoholic. He stepped through the doors on that Thursday night. I can't explain it. She couldn't get the victory over cigarettes. He walks in the door on Thursday night and immediately... His desire for drink is gone. He goes all day Friday, doesn't drink. Goes all day Saturday, doesn't drink. Didn't even get saved until Sunday morning. Hallelujah. But when he got saved, he got it in the old time way. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Amen. Then, just a few services later, I was preaching on Watchmen one of the night. And all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost fell on Iris. And immediately... She was delivered without a struggle. Come on now. Their nephew got saved. He's at export right now preaching the gospel. But what would have happened? Amen. If the first response when all they could say was stimulus. Amen. And I said, I'm going to kill you. Amen. Where would her husband be? Where would Victoria be? Where would Shane be? I'm telling you, we need to be a little more compassionate. You see, the pronunciation difference between the East, it was between the East and the West Jordanic tribes. Are you hearing me? What I'm trying to say, they were both born on the other sides of the river. On the wrong sides of the track. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Come on now, some of you, you've been saying similar for a long time. But I won't tell you before this service is over. God wants to loose your tongue and let you say shibboleth. He's tired of you carrying that burden. Sibboleth burden, sibboleth burden. Amen. He wants you to say shibboleth. A river flowing. He wants somebody out of their belly. Amen. To flow rivers of living water. Come on here. Listen to me. Amen. Listen, listen. We are so quick to cut one another off. We don't respect each other's diversity. If they're not just like me, then forget it. Now listen, I'm preaching about people that don't know any better. Teaching them how to say shibboleth. But I want to say this is a disclaimer. Some of you used to say shibboleth. But now, through rebellion, all you're saying is sibboleth. And you're in a whole different league. Are you hearing me? And God's going to deal with that. Are you hearing what I'm telling? Did you hear that? I'm preaching about working with those that are coming into holiness. Hallelujah. I'm not really talking about you that know and refuse to say shibboleth because of your own obstinate, stubborn will. Now I'm probably, now I'm really in trouble. But hallelujah. I want to tell you, we don't respect one another. Everybody here was raised in different parts of the country. I was born and raised in California. Brother 
Brother Dwayne was born and raised in Illinois. Uh, you were in, in Missouri, right? Right here in Missouri. Sister, even Gallagher was raised in Ohio and probably many other states. We all were raised in different homes. Amen. Our lives have led different paths and we're here tonight. Some of us are shouters. Others are powders. Some are praisers and some are weepers. Amen. But sometimes, amen, we get so put out with somebody that's not of our same. Amen. Come on now. Our, our type, if you will. Hallelujah. We want to take them and cut them down. Oh, glory to God. I want to tell you right now, I believe we can have diversity. Amen. Without division. Oh, come on. Somebody help me preach. Gotta use different styles. Come on now. now. I'm glad everybody doesn't preach like Tracy Boyd. I'm glad there's some, amen, Brother Don Tabers and some Brother Dwayne Gallagher's and some Brother Joey Heights. I'm glad we don't all preach the same. But I want to tell you, hallelujah, it doesn't matter, amen, what temperament you're of tonight. You may be quiet, but I'm telling you, we need to break out of our civilist mentality. And let God begin to help us speak. Shibboleth. We need the river of God to begin to flow. Would you lift your hands and praise Him? I'm going to try to hurry up. Now, now, if my brother was here, does anybody know my brother? How many know my brother Robbie? There's a few. Okay. If my brother was here, we are like light and darkness. He's tall. I'm short. He's buffed. I got a pool pit bumper. Come on now. He's good looking. I'm just looking. <laughs> Hallelujah. He drives a Chevy. I drive a Ford. Come on now. We have never, he's quiet, backward, and I'm loud and boisterous. Come on now, I used to not be this way. I used to testify like this, young folks. No kidding. See, you don't think God can ever use you. This is my testimony. Glad the Lord saved me, filled me with the Holy Ghost. I want to make heaven my home. That was it. Hallelujah. But listen to me. Sometimes we get so stereotyped that if people ain't just like we are, we don't think God can use them. Amen. I'm telling you, we need the stern, Bible-thumping Benny Sutherlands in our movement. We need the witty, amen, and sometimes comical, Ralph, Co Brother Ralph Cox and Brother Randy Webb in our ministry. Are you hearing me? Amen. We need campus preachers like Brother Gillis and some of those to do what they're doing. We need soul winning preachers like Sister Shirley Lester. Are you hearing me? John the Baptist said, Hallelujah. Tennyson said, John the Baptist showed me all my sin. But Jesus showed me all the grace. I'm telling you, we need John the Baptist. Amen. Preaching repentance. And we need Jesus. Amen. Pouring in the oil and wine. Amen. Of God's grace. Oh, I wish somebody would help me. We can't get to the place we become so narrow-minded and become so spiritually bigoted that if somebody's not our flavor, amen, we automatically say they don't have God's favor. If they're not in our clique, if they're not in our club, amen, we're not going to help them preach. We're not going to help them sing. I'm telling you, we've got to get rid of this superiority. Amen. We've got to get rid, amen, of the petty indies and the jealousies among us. We need a baptism of the Holy Ghost in fire that will bring unity back to the church of the living God. Amen. You know, some of us church folks are like old Bo Jackson. Back when he played for the Royals, my brother Mike Roberts told me this illustration. I don't know where it got it. He's the one that told me, and I loved it. I never forgot it. Bo and them got beat. And, oh, no, that's, that's a Missouri team. I better watch it. Hallelujah. But, but, but anyway, hallelujah. 
they got beat. And they asked Bo, they said, Bo, are you going to the World Series? This is what Bo Jackson replied. He said, if Bo ain't in it, Bo ain't interested. Come on now. If Bo ain't in it, Bo ain't interested. That's how some of us are. If I'm not singing, I'm not interested. If I'm not teaching, I'm not interested. If I'm not preaching, I'm not interested. Hey, that whatever happened, come on, Brother Gallagher said it right at Allentown. I wasn't there, but I listened to the tape. He said, come on now, we're not rivals. We're team teammates. Are you hearing me? We're not in a competition. We're in this thing together. I'm telling you, we need a revival. Oh, hallelujah. You know... I'm almost through. There's no more searching test in this church is if you're willing to let God use others without using you. When somebody else gets up and sings and gets anointed and it's not you, what rises up here in you? Come on now. It ought not to be. I wish we could take them down to the river and kill them. Come on. Oh, God, I need your help. And I, I need to hurry. You know, in, in the church, we've got people that are like Martha. They're busy. They're active. They're demonstrative. They're always moving. Huh? Man, I got a guy in my church. I mean, every service, man. I'm not even trying to imitate him. You guys would think I... I mean, he is wired up, son. Wow. I mean, he is a Mary or a Martha if I ever see. But then you got the Marys that are quiet, meditative, silent. They might lift their hands and tears stream down their face. Come on now. And a lot of times, those that are of that Martha personality... Mary gets on their nerves. They don't ever get in. Deadhead ain't never seen them move. Huh? Come on now. Always sitting around there, sitting at the Lord's feet. Who do they think they are? Huh? Come on now. And then you got you got them uh, you got them of, of that 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 Mary temperament. I wish they'd quit shouting. It's not all in the shout. Huh? I wish they'd quit all that running. Come on here. I wish they'd quit all that worshiping. Don't they know? It's just, it's all in the Word. Give me the Word. Give me the Word. Give me the Word. Come on, I was preaching for George Davis. He been senior. And man, we were having a meeting. I was a young preacher. God come up to me. He said, you know what? This, this singing's good. The Davis family, but man, I love preaching for them. They blew it out every night. I just shouted. Had a great time. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Hey, man, this man come up and said, hey. He said, he said, Sonny. That's what he told me. Sonny. I mean, he, he was really of the merry, merry temperament. Yeah. Can I just take my time? Am I preaching too long? I know I am. Hallelujah. But I, this is no lie. This is how he's setting the service. I'm not lying either. Huh? Hallelujah. Souvenirs, baby. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. He really did that. I'm not kidding you. Ask George Davis Jr. He'll, he'll vouch for it. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, and he come up to me and he said, Sonny, we need the Word. I said, all right, yeah, man, we need the Word. We need the Word. We need it. Next night I got up preaching. Come on now. Look back. He had his handkerchief. He had his ears. And he was... 
Come on now. Hallelujah. I won't tell you. You've got all types of people in the church. Hallelujah. I don't care. Amen. If everybody puts, amen, Kleenex in their ears, if you're a shouter and you feel the Spirit of God, lift up your voice. Give God praise and give Him glory. Are you hearing me? I'm telling you, there's a, there's a time that all you Marys that are quiet, you need to act like Martha. And then there's times uh, when all you Marthas uh, that are noisy need to act like Mary. But anyway, the Lord fixes it tonight uh, in this youth rally. I say, Lord, uh, fix it any way you want it. It'll be all right with us. Would you lift your heads and praise Him? We need a move around these altars. It doesn't matter how well the preacher preaches. If when altar time comes, it's dead. We failed tonight. You hear me? Come on now. Jesus said, and He ordained twelve, that they should be with Him, and that He might send them forth to preach. Jesus wanted human fellowship and sympathy. He needed to feel a friendly hand and hear a friendly voice. He handpicked twelve men. It wasn't an accident that number twelve represented a new nation, a holy nation. A peculiar people, come on now, who would show forth the praises of Him that had called them out of darkness into His marvelous light. He handpicked 12 men, and if there was ever a bunch of men that were diverse, if there was ever a bunch of men, amen, that weren't the same, it was these 12. Amen. Peter, he was a man of action. He always spoke when he shouldn't. He was a man of impact. Pulse. He was a born leader. But then you had John who leaned on his bosom. Amen. He was a man of prayer. Nathaniel was in that company. He was quick to believe. But then you had Thomas who was slow to believe. And we call him Doubting Thomas. You have Matthew. He was a tax collector. He was a lover of Rome. He lived and dressed with Rome attire. But then you had Amen. Simon the Zealot. Amen. He was a rebel. He hated taxes. He hated. Amen. Come on now, the Roman government. But these were the men that Jesus handpicked. They were diverse. They were as different as daylight and dark. Are you hearing me? Come on now. Before Pentecost, they were high seat civilist seekers. They were always saying, who'll be the greatest? Who's going to sit at your right hand? Come on now. And Jesus was trying to tell them, boys, boys, I'm going to die. I'm going to raise again. Who's going to be the greatest? I don't know if in the, in the, in the human part, Jesus said, Lord, said, Father, dear Lord, I can't get these guys to say shibboleth. Come on. They've been with, with me for three and a half years. They've seen me heal the sick, raise the dead, calm the wind, turn the water into wine, walk on water, and I can't get it through to them. Don't you ever think they might have been a little bit of a burden? Come on now. Come on now. But he handpicked them. Amen. They were diverse. Hallelujah. But when they couldn't get shibboleths down, come on now. He didn't take them down and slay them. He kept working with them. And he said, hey boys, it is expedient that I go away. But if I go away, I will send you another comforter. Hallelujah that He may abide with you forever. And when the Spirit is come, amen, which the world cannot receive, because it seeth or knoweth not, but ye know, for He dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Come on, somebody, help me preach. Somebody said from the first church of the Pharisee, they're a bunch of unlearned, ignorant fishermen. 
Amen. Amen. Come on now. All they can say is civil. They don't have any money. They don't have any pulpits. They don't have any sanctuaries. But I want to tell you, my God, Amen. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. And they began to speak with other tongues. Amen. Come on. All the sudden they weren't saying Sibboleth anymore. They were saying Sibboleth. It was a river flowing. Oh, hallelujah. It's the Holy Ghost and fire. And it's keeping me alive. Would you lift your hands and praise Him? Come on, Shay. What kind of service would we have? If we laid aside our seeking of superiority, we laid aside all, laid aside all of our secret pet envies, and we got in one mind. You're living holiness, but it's a burden to you. You're dr it's a drudgery to you because you don't have it in your heart. All you can say is, Sibyl, come on now. Holiness is not something that ought to be a drudgery. Come on now. When it gets in your heart and you fall in love with Jesus. Oh, hallelujah! Come on now. Aren't you tired of saying, Sibyl, God wants to lose somebody's tongue. He wants to refill you. He wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Would you stand all over the building? Stretch your hands toward heaven. Say, oh Lord, send the power just now. Woo. Hallelujah. Come on, if you're a new convert here, you don't understand everything. We ain't going to kill you. We're going to teach you. We're going to pronounce it to you. We're going to live it for you. Aren't we, church? And if some of you know better than to be doing some of the things you're doing, and you're refusing to say shibboleth, because you don't want to say that H word, Shame on you. You need to come back here and pray until you fall in love with Jesus. His commandments all over again. Hallelujah. This altar's open. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I wonder. Now listen.